Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. I've got my squirrel friends in front of me because this is undoubtedly the squirreliest video I have ever made. This is take five, six, something like that, and I keep changing my mind on what I want to do. And anyway, this is part of a collaboration with Rachel and Bella Craft and Angela Kerr called Crafting a Garden Story. And we utilize their absolutely gorgeous kit uh, to create things. And this is winding down at the end of this collaboration. And the hashtag is hashtag journal jigsaw. Most of you are probably following along, but in case you're not, please I'll put the links below. Check out all these other amazing makers. Now, I haven't watched a single video because I didn't want to influence, my, influence myself with what I would make and not make. And so I may have duplicated something, but I doubt it simply because I've changed my mind a dozen times on what I'm actually going to make today. But again, it's Rachel and Bella Craft and Angela Kerr, and they each have kits, and I'll link where you can get those kits. And there's playlist of all the channels. Now, it's 30 days, I believe, of creators, and there's two creators a day. One is focusing on a rustic and grungy type of a look, and another one is a bright and shabby. And each day also has prompts. My day has the prompts of, whoops, wrong one, Corey. My day has the prompts of ethereal embossing. And ethereal just means kind of light and airy and almost too perfect for this world type of a, a thing. And I've made a bunch of different stuff, a bunch of different things, and then changed my mind several times because embossing and ethereal and combining the two. And I thought maybe we would make something like this because it's kind of ethereal in nature. It's got the dry embossed paper in the background. It can be either um, wallpaper or cardstock, or you can use your embossing folders if you have an embossing machine. And then the window film and transparency and a bit of a flower. And there's a bulb pin and some lace. So very kind of ethereal looking. And then I changed my mind and thought, no, let's do something like this. But not everybody likes to sew. And Anyway, and all oh, the back of this is fun and it has embossing and an ethereal look. But I was, like I said, all over the place. And then I thought, ah, oh, I can do something like this because they've got beautiful fussy cut flowers. And how beautiful would that be to put a fussy cut on top and then just make a, a top of a journal with a tuck and play with that one for a while. And, and no, honestly, I'm not even 100% sure, but I think this is where I'm going to land. And the reason I'm landing here. It, ethereal embossing. Corey, there's nothing ethereal about that and there's no embossing, but I'm going to show you how we can do that. And that's the whole point of this. This is essentially, let me grab a journal. It's well, I'll use this one even though it's not designed for this size. So the idea with this piece is it's a full page and it goes inside of a journal, like the inside front or the inside back. Kind of like, well, kind of like this one, right? Where it's a, you know, there's a whole piece that you put down for the page, you know, and um, let's see if this folds up and then that holds it in place like there. So it's a whole a whole page piece basically is, is what I'm trying to say. And it can be used on the front or the back, or you can even put it on a standard page. And it's very simple and it's perfect with this kit and it can be used in any style or type of a journal, which is why I think I'm going to land on this. And, I, and it's easy to make with, um, whatever materials you have on hand. So I am going to go with this. However, before I start, I want to show you a little bit of the kit. Now, I didn't print everything. There are quite a few um, people images in these, in these kits, and that wasn't what I was going for because I want to use this in one of my journals, and I've got a theme going on with those journals. So it, it didn't work with the people, but this concept would work beautifully with the people. And the whole ethereal thing, I was thinking about that, and how I could incorporate it in here and and still make it sturdy and such. And there are lots of gorgeous images like this. This is printed on Epson heavyweight cardstock. And this is printed on, it's the same thing, but it's, oh no, this one's a different one. It's another image of the same set. Okay, I knew I had, knew I had something going on here. Here it is on copy paper, Epson copy paper. It's beautiful just on copy paper, but here it is on thin tracing paper. 
and it's kind of got a shimmery sheen quality. I thought maybe I could make like a coin envelope or something with it. And here it is on heavyweight vellum. Isn't that just fabulous on vellum? So we may end up using the vellums just because I love it. And then here, I thought this would make an absolutely gorgeous cover. This is inkjet art paper canvas 125 pound i got it on amazon but i'm sure you can get it anywhere but look how incredible it looks printed on canvas it will make them it's sturdy super sturdy super thick make it a most gorgeous journal cover so i'm probably going to end up using this as the journal cover which is what made me think well then i need to use this for the inside page for the cover and i like this size journal and that's what I'm going to be making because I want to make myself a journal to follow along with all the other people and what they've made. So that's kind of where I'm going with this piece. And this would be one of those videos where I could just turn on my camera and keep people with me all day. I'm like, oh, I want to make this and I want to make this. And again, all over the place. But um, I'm going to move on. Okay, the kit. They're... Um, links will be below Rachel's version and uh, Angela's and there's background papers and this is just a small fraction of all the availability are the available pieces that they've got um, just incredible and beautiful like look, look how pretty that is just absolutely love it so yeah gosh no I'm not see I'm a squirrel again I was going to use this for the images but I'm not going to I'm going to stick with what I said I was going to do I printed some on cardstock and some on and I have to got to find one that I printed on cardstock and some on um, copy paper but I want a thicker one for the base for what I'm going to do here so let's see if I can find one that I printed on cardstock I know I've got some okay I should have been more organized and I wasn't. Oh, here, this will work. This is cardstock and I want that as the background. So I will, I will do that. Okay, um, embossing. Before I forget, embossing. Because it's embossed, you can use wallpaper. This is just wallpaper. It's got that raised embossed image. This is kind of a different type of embossing. This is collaged scraps of paper and then I glue them all down to make a collage of the same exact paper and inked it lightly and then I went over my sewing machine and it's kind of got that embossed texture. I've got another piece here that is embossed cardstock that you can purchase. This happens to be really old K and Company cardstock but it's also embossed. Um, no way around that darn shadow, sorry. So embossed but I also thought well embossing doesn't have to mean it. Oh, here, here's some embossed with embossing folders through a die cut machine and not everybody has a die cut machine but really cool and you know what that's really pretty so maybe I'll use it because I like it together all right embossed but I also used embossing powder and embossing ink on some of the fussy cut pieces so these are the pieces that I use this is Seth Apter vintage beeswax embossing powder and this is an embossing pad just fussy cut the pieces put them on here and heat set it. So lots and lots and lots of videos on how to do in wet or in dry embossing. So these are my pieces. Really like that yellow too. Really like the yellow with this. Really like this. So I'm going to use some combination of these pieces. I don't know what yet. Some combination of these pieces to make this particular pocket. And embossed. I'll show you what I mean. I did it on one of the videos that I um, made and, and then deleted or goofed or one of them I had no sound on. But anyway, these are how they look, the fussy cut pieces, how they look embossed. And this one is one of the other ones that I showed, but I just cut the bow off. I'll wrap a piece of lace around there because I wanted to hang something else on it. So these are embossed, wet embossed versus the dry embossed paper that I showed you. All right, let's get to it. I really like the vellum so I think I'm going to use the vellum and I'm going to use this as my guideline and I believe this is about six inches tall and about four inches wide yeah I really like six and a quarter inch tall albums by four and a quarter inch wide so that means the inside piece would be six by four so that's what I'm going to do here you can make it bigger you can make it smaller it's a really simple piece that'll go in any album hence the reason I'm doing it 
All right, I need something sturdy as the base because this is a cardstock base. And you know what? We're going to go with this. And I'm going to cut this to six by four. And so trim it down to four inches and trim it to six inches. Now I'll save the scraps because I can use those for tucks and pieces that are going to go inside. But this is the base, what I'm going to use for the background. And that is dry embossed using um, uh, 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 embossing folder in a die cut machine. You just put the paper in the folder and run it through. Now I'm going to, I've got a little bit of ink on my brush and I want this to stand out a little bit more. So I'm just running it through here like this, or running it over it just to get the little bit of ink that's on my brush on my embossed image to get it to stand up like that. And this one has corners rounded and I like that so I'm going to do the same thing. Um, let's see, let's go with the middle, middle sized. I'm rounding the corners, don't have to. Again, my goal is to make this an inside front or inside back piece. And I will ink around here. I know it seemed like I'm in a rush, but I've done this video so many times, I feel like I'm wasting your time, even though you guys haven't seen it. But I was totally a squirrel today and I just could not decide. I haven't, I just got back from Arizona. I was visiting my son, my oldest son and grandson and daughter-in-law and I ended up staying longer because of illness and such. Not mine, others. And um, so I didn't play as much as I wanted to beforehand. I'm going to make that stand out a little bit more, a little bit more ink. There we go. Just using my blending brush and going right over the top. Not blending brush, uh, inking tool. All right, so that's going to be my background. And I really wanted to use these this paper gosh that's pretty but you know what it's almost like busy on top of busy hmm okay maybe plan b and i really like this but at the same time the colors are so close together that maybe i won't you know what maybe i will save this for a journal card and i'll just use the wet embossed pieces yep that's what i'm going to do all right once again changing my mind and that's then the theme every single thing i've made lately I've just kind of changed my mind on and let's see so this needs to be completed size of four and completed size of six and there we go. and I'll save these scraps for something else yeah that's what I'm gonna do okay okay and again we're going to round those corners. I do like that piece, but I want I want the bold brightness of these pretty colors, even though I'm the grungy person. Um, I'll grunge this up, I promise. But um, I just really love the way that, that vellum printed. Okay, there's that. And I will absolutely use that because look how cool that is. Um, ink the edges around this. I suppose I could do that later, but if this is a grungy one, so I'm going to show you how I grungy this up. Now I'm using Walnut Stain ink because I like that color with this particular kit, and it's the one I generally choose most of the time. But there's a new color Tim Holtz has called Scorched Timber that is, it's, it's kind of a gray black, but it's a warm gray as opposed to a cool gray, and it's delicious, and it's really, works really well with this as well. Okay, so that's nice and grunged up. So you can see, you can make this bright or you can grunge it and it grunges wonderfully. All right, now I am going to put my bottom pocket in. The way I'm gonna do this, and you don't, certainly don't have to do it this way. The way I'm gonna do it is cut a piece and then separate it. And I'll tell you, show you what I mean in just a moment so that it looks like it's continuing on. I want this to be smaller so that my width is four inches. Gosh, that shadow, I apologize. I just not quite sure how to get rid of it. It's not nasty. My width is four inches, so I want this to be a little bit smaller. And uh, let's see, this one is, I think this is four inches also, and the piece on top is three and a half. So I'm gonna cut this to three and a half inches wide. I'm gonna take that edge off first. Again, this is printed on 
the one I'm grabbed for this is the heavyweight vellum, simply because I think vellum gives things an um, a real look, ethereal look. So I'm going to cut this to three and a half. And I could have been selective about which flowers show where and such, but for this I, I don't really need to. And I do, this is Italian straw paper, but I think it's the one from um, Etsy. And I do like the way they look together too, so I may end up using that. But then again, I may use it on this and do something a little bit more grungy. Don't know yet. Don't know. All right, trimmed that. And now this piece on the bottom, because of the size that I'm using, this one is about, well, uh, looks like one and a quarter-ish. And I'm going to take the end of this off just because I've got a bit of um, empty space there. And I'm going to do this at about one, one and a half. It doesn't have to be exact. Let's see, I'm not in frame there. So how about one and a half? And then I want this to continue up, which is why I'm going to leave this. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to leave this here. And that is going to make my front piece on here. See how this kind of rolls or wraps around? I'll show you how I'm going to do that. It's just made it's a little notepad here, but I'm going to alter it a smidge to use the dry embossed piece. Okay, this is my top bit, and this is my bottom bit, and I'm going to take a circle punch. doesn't matter what size. Um, this isn't even a circle punch. This is a tab punch, but it'll work like a circle punch. And I'm just going to take a little bit out, a divot out. Yeah, see, that'll work too. I'm going to take a divot out to make that bit on the bottom. It just makes it look more like a pocket. And then I'll ink that edge. And I want to make sure that I've got right, the side that I want up. And you know what? I didn't do See here? This one went the width of the bottom. And this one, I did not go the width of the bottom. So, plan B. I'm going to make this four inches. All right, and this is why I plan everything out in advance as a general rule. But that's okay. We're going to make this work. Trying this again. This time I'm going to cut it to four inches, so it's the actual... But you know what? That'll work out perfectly because that will make a beautiful bookmark. I'll sew that directly onto a piece of cardstock, put some, um, some of this ribbon in the top, and boom instant cardstock bookmark or instant bookmark that'll go beautifully okay trimming off the bottom of this trying this again and then i said it was about an inch and a half ish all right make that an inch and a half and there we go all right i'm going to use that punch simply because it was right at hand and again take out a little divot in the middle so it looks like a tuck or a pocket and I'm eyeballing it. I generally don't eyeball, but for the sake of this, we're going to eyeball. Okay. Yeah, just, I'm normally more decisive, but there's, this is such a beautiful kit with so many options. I've wanted to make a gazillion different things, and landing on one has proven to be a challenge for me. All right. Yeah, just like that. I do want a little bit more ink, though. Vellum is a hard pressed paper, so sometimes it takes a bit to absorb the ink. You need a little more ink than you might normally. And because I'm doing the grunge version, I want to make sure that it's nice and grungy. Okay. Now I am going to put this. Now, vellum on here, you can see I just glued it down. And, and that works fine because this is cardstock on cardstock. I am um, a fan of sewing my vellum in place. But I don't want to take the time to pull the machine out and not everybody has a machine. So I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to glue it. Now this is, I'm just doing a thin bit of, this is art glitter glue. I've rubbed off the label. I use the, the bottle a lot. Um, but barely art glue works just as well. Reptile glue works really well. Some people swear by clear glue, like, oh, Fabri-Tac type glue for vellum. Because this vellum is printed, it's not going to have the same kind of issues that glue showing through would have if it were a solid vellum, solid color vellum. It's printed, so it really 
doesn't show when you glue it in place. The glue itself doesn't show. So we'll push that down. I think it's pretty. I made that must have, must have made that a little bit wider, so I'm going to trim this. This is going to be glued down in the back, so even though it's beautiful and I'm going to lose that image, um, it won't show. Now I'm going to trim these corners. I want those rounded as well. And there's my bottom tuck. I will ink this just because I find it easier to ink it now before I glue it in the book. So I guess I would call this a book plate. Sure, that's what we'll call it, a book plate. All right, so there is that piece. And then this top piece, normally I take one long piece of cardstock and roll the whole thing over. But I don't want to do that this time because I want this to look like it continues up. See how I cut it there? I want it to look like it continues, just continues straight up. So what I'm going to do is rather than measure, I'm going to look and see where I want it to stop on these images. Um, and I'm going to cut it right between these two flowers because this is going to be my top piece. I'm going to cut it a little bit longer because I'm going to do something else. All right, normally, like I said, I take one long piece of cardstock, but this time I'm not doing that. You can see here, I don't want it to be the width of the page because I want this paper to show. So I'm going to take a quarter inch off on this side and a quarter inch off on this side so that my image still looks like it continues through. Quarter inch on the right. I'm going to flip it around and take a quarter inch off the left so my total dimension is three and a half. And I'll save those because those will look really pretty in clusters. Um, yes, it's on. Good. Good. Okay. So this is going to be up here. Now, I need, it's too long, Corey, but I want to score this so that it lifts up. I am going to grab my scoreboard. You can just fold it if you want. But I want about, let's see, this is, I'm going to do quite a bit of a score because I want to put my notepad on top of it. So I scored it at the top. I did about three quarters of an inch. Do whatever you want. But I want the notepad top to not show, which is why I scored it a little deeper than I might normally score it. So you can see there, scored, and then I'm going to put it on here just like so. And I am going to, oh, I'm going to use a bit of that top piece because do you see how the top is, it gets lighter as you go up? Look how pretty that's going to be as the closure. It's going to be like an overlap. Okay. So I'm going to round these corners now. And again, I used the middle one. This is the a We Are Memory Keepers corner rounder. I like it simply because I get three different size corners on one piece. Did I round those? I did. Okay, so let's round both of those. And then, again, I'm going to ink these. This is a simple project. I know that there's a variety of skill and um, experience levels in this with the people who are watching this collaboration. So I wanted to make this something that anybody could do with minimal supplies and just using the kit, essentially. Not that you have to use this. This will work really well with um, any, any kit, but it's specifically designed for this kit in this project because it's so pretty. And I don't remember if I said it on this video or one of the other videos, but I'll put the link for, for the, where you can purchase the kit. But also there's some freebies. There's some beautiful fussy cut freebies that um, Rach at Rach and Bella Crafts has created, and they are on her coffee page. And so I'll, I'll link that as well because I really, really love them. Okay, so I'm going to glue that in place there. And then I've got this hinge in the back, right, that we just made. All I'm going to do is glue that hinge down. Fold over hinge. I don't know how else to call that. And because it's printed vellum again, it's not going to show. And I will lay that right about here. It doesn't have to match up perfectly, but I want it to be about equidistant. And I think I want it to go up just a little bit more. And I have that wiggle room, especially with the vellum, even though I am using art glitter glue. And I want it to be mostly centered-ish and mostly straight. All right. 
Let's hope I did that right. Yeah, that's mostly straight, mostly centered. And I need a little bit more glue under there. Whoops. There we go. Okay. And I could take, you know, if you're not, if you're wanting to be perfectly straight, you can see there, I can take my ruler and check and it is straight. Because sometimes when you're looking at something at an angle, you can't tell if it's straight or not. And that's straight. Okay, so yes, this is a little bit shorter, but I'll show you why. Now what I'm going to do is, gonna, what I'm going to do is get some paper, notepad paper. I thought I'd put it down here, but perhaps I didn't. Perhaps I didn't. Some notepad paper. Hmm. And make a notepad underneath. Now I could do this because it's yellow and it'll show. And that's kind of pretty. Do I like that? This is just stationary that I have that's, that, that's, that happens to be this color. And let's see, look, there's what, four pieces? Five, I've got five pieces. All right. I like the lighter shade. You can see how it's darker on some. You can use anything for this. Note paper, lined paper, coffee dyed paper. I want it to fit underneath just a smidge smaller than the, um, the folded over bit. So I need to make this, what was that? That was three and a half inches wide. So I need to make this about three and a half minus an eighth of an inch or something like that. So trim that off and I'll use that for something else for sure. And then I'll make it just a smidge smaller than three and a half to make sure it fits. Okay. And then I'll use those leftover bits for another notepad. And then I want it to be just a little bit, you can see here, just a little bit longer than the length of the top piece. And the reason for that is it's going to tuck into this bottom bit. So my top piece is, um, let's see. So if I start it here, it's about three and a quarter. So I'm going to do this at about three and a half. I'll do that at three and a half and then trim it down. And again, I'll use all those other bits to make notepads. And then you can glue it, you can sew it, you can staple it. I like to sew it, so I'm going to do that very quickly. Just a straight line across the top to make my notepad. I like it because it doesn't add much dimension, but it's certainly not necessary. You can use anything. Okay, see, you can see I just sewed it across the top there. And I'll take off those extra bits. And I'm going to round the bottoms of this as well, simply because I did on the other one. Actually, though, I don't know if I did. I don't remember. Let's see, did I? No, I didn't. It was just a straight notepad. So you can do that or not. It's up to you. Anyway, that's going to go underneath here and you can see it's a little bit longer which is what I wanted I wanted the notepad to be a little bit longer and uh, because I rounded that top piece I am going to round this top piece so that my um, maybe it won't show let's see if I put it down right here and right there it doesn't show so I don't even need to round that okay now where I've got my sew line I'm going to put my glue and glue that into place Glue that into place. Make sure it's straight. Okay. And I didn't glue the whole thing down, though you certainly could. I just glued that top bit. And there's my notepad. I want to make sure there's no seepage of the glue because then it'll glue it closed, and I really don't want to do that. All right, there's my notepad, and it extends down. Now I'm going to do the bottom piece, the piece that's going to hold it closed, right? Like this. But I want, I really want that, oh, that's so pretty. Hmm. I am going to make a small score line here. So let's do maybe about, oh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch of a score. Just a little bit of a score on this one. And I'm doing it at the bottom so that it tucks underneath. Okay, so I've got just a little bit of a score line it's going to tuck remember i didn't glue this down so i'm going to tuck it underneath this and i glue it in place so that it fits just like that and then it'll come up 
over the top. So you've still got a little bit of a gap here so you can see that pattern paper and for a tuck there and then you can see the colors over the top. Now this one I did a single layer and I put some brads in. This one I'm going to do a little bit differently and actually you know what I think I'll score this because it's so sheer. I'm going to score this at, and I'm rather than measuring I'm using the top of the flower mark. I want that that flower to show because it's so pretty. So I'm scoring that, right? And I'm going to fold this over. Now this top piece that I printed is mostly clear of images. I'm going to fold that whole thing down so you can see it's too long. But I did that to make this a bit thicker so that it'll hold it in place because that's cardstock and this is vellum and it's just a heavy, medium, medium heavyweight vellum. Right? And now I need to do the same thing where I make where I make it is the same width, so three and a half inch width. And these don't have to match exactly, though it would be nice if they did, but it, they don't have to. And it's it's not going to show like that. Yeah, it's not going to show at all. So I'll just do the same thing and take about a quarter of an inch off each side, though I didn't have to. I could have just cut a, a half inch off the whole thing. Now I am going to trim. So I've got it folded over and I've got this extended piece down below. I am going to trim and I'm measuring so it's just a little over one. I'm going to open it up so I don't cut this by mistake. So I've got it folded over because I want the thickness. Um, and I'm going to trim that off just like that. See so I've got the folded over the extra thickness of the vellum and um, you can't see the bottom line because it's it's kind of hidden. And then I am going to I've got my three pieces on this top piece that's folded over in the back. I'm going to put a little bit of glue. Now that will absolutely show if I don't smear it out. You know what? Maybe I'll do is just put a little bit of glue stick because glue stick won't show at all. And I'll put that push that down here just to make it a little bit thicker because it is vellum. And vellum is a, a thicker paper by nature. It's more tightly compressed, but I want this to, to look good. All right, and now I'm gonna round these top corners like I did the others, so it's going to fit over the top like this. Now I did not glue this hinge yet, so make sure you do not glue that hinge because that's going to be what you wrap up and over, if that makes sense. Um, Let's see, what did I say? Oh, I need the corner rounder to round this. And I have it, I toss it back in there all the time in my uh, punch bin. All right, there we go. And I will ink this. And sometimes I will, you know, this ink dries very quickly, but sometimes because vellum is such a, a heavy paper, I'll give it a little bit more time to dry. Sometimes I'll even zap it with my heat gun. Now embossing. Corey, where's your embossing on here? I will show you what the embossing. I'm going to use one of the wet embossed flowers on this. But first I want to set that up. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's pretty. Okay, now with this little hinge piece I am going to put glue on the bottom of the flap so that it rolls up. I'm going to put glue just here on that bottom of that scored flap piece. Okay, and I'm going to lift this up and kind of wrap it around, for want of a better word. I'm going to lift my little notepad up, and it's nice and adhered now. It's had a time to sit, and I'm going to wrap it around like this and make sure it fits and it goes straight, and then I'm going to glue that down in place. See? That way I'm sure everything fits nicely. And... And this piece gets to tuck in here and there you go. Now on this one you can see I used two decorative brads just to make sure it's held in place and I think I'm going to do the same thing on this. Don't have to but I just like the way it holds it down. So and then this is going to be glued into the cover plate basically of a book so it's not going to show. Um, if you were wanting it to be loose on a page and you didn't want those brad backs on there then you can um, you know, not do this piece because it, it'll stay down without it. Um, but I really, I like the, the gold on there and I want to 
put those brads in. All right, so this is three and a half inches. So I want to make these mostly centered. And so I'll put one at two and one at three, and then there'll be one and a quarter on each side. And then I'm just going to use my Tim Holtz pokey tool. See, sometimes I'm not as smart as I look. If I did that, look what I would do. I would poke holes in my paper and it would, when I lifted this up, aren't you glad I didn't do that? I wouldn't be able to lift up my notepad. So here I had put it down lower because I'd wrapped it around so you can see it doesn't. So I am actually, even though I want to, I am not going to do that for this. I am going to, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with plan B. All right. I am going to go with the edge right here and right here. Let's see. That's about an inch and a half. I said, so I'm going to go at about three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to do right at this edge. I'm not poking my matchbook style hinge. I'm just poking right next to it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So you can see those holes I made right to the left, right to the right. Did I say that backwards? Right to the right, right to the, whatever, right next to it. And then I've got some, I think I've got some little gold brads in here. Gold just because of the color. Yeah, that's what we'll do. I've got gold brad. There's a gold one. I've got these brassy gold ones and I've got gold, gold ones. I don't know. Let's see what I get two of first. They're different sizes, they're different colors. I have a whole bunch all mixed in here. So let's see, two of one. Okay, we're gonna use these bright gold ones. But you know what? Hmm, maybe I won't because these aren't as bright. Maybe I'll use the brassy gold ones. I definitely don't want copper. But let's see, uh, that's, that's not copper. That's a brassy color. And that's a brassy color. I think those are the same, let's look and see. I did, nope, totally different colors. Glad I looked. I like that gold with this, so, and I think that'll work. Let's see if I've got any more of those. Maybe this one. Yeah, those two look like they're the same. Okay, I'm gonna put those on there. If you want to do it like I did here, when you've got the one piece of cardstock, if you're using cardstock, just make sure you've got a gap for yourself so you can put those down without um, holding your notepad in place. I mean, it would pin down my notepad. So I'm going to do this and turn it sideways. That will give me that dimension and look I want without holding my notepad hostage. Okay, and that sideways, again, create as I go, squirrel. All right, and that kind of holds these edges down, and I like, I like the way that looks. Okay, now, again, I'm going to use, I could, you know, this is just um, a vocabulary card. The colors were perfect, and I tucked it in here, and I think, well, I don't even know where I put it now. The other bit was just a little tag. This is one of my embossed, one of the pieces that I embossed. And so I am going to put this on a tag. I'll just borrow that from there. I'm going to put this on a tag, but I'm going to trim this down a little bit. That's one of the beauties of this type of a kit. If it's bigger or smaller than you, you need, you can, you can trim it. Fussy cuts. You can cut out what you don't want or trim down what you don't want. I am going to do that. And you know what? I've got a bit of lace right here. Remember I said that there was um, another piece on here, um, a, a faux gingham ribbon, and I want this lace to show. So what I'm going to do, I just had this little scrap off cut of lace, and I save these things often. So I am going to do this and this. And you know what? Maybe I want it a little bit more ratty. So I'll go like that. Just wanted a little bit more ratty, and I'll save that because I'll use that too. And I'm going to wrap the whole bit around like this and like this. Okay. And I wonder if I have another one of those. Hmm. Let's let's see. I 
need to trim this down a little bit more. It's too wide at the edge. There, that's better. Trim that down a little bit more. That one a little bit more. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I'll wrap this around. Put the right side down, the left side down. And so that covers the gingham bit. What I want to do is maybe and not that the gingham wasn't pretty it was very very pretty I just knew that I wouldn't would want something different for this particular journal all right I'll go there and then I'm gonna poke a hole here and let's hope I have another one of those that color of brad I'll bring this up and I'll just hold that in place like that and I'll look for another one of those brads and I'll use the brad to hold the whole thing together and then I'll put it on a tag and that'll tie the pieces together Let's see if I have any more of that color. Um, can't tell. That's what happens when you get fuzzy eyeballs. Uh, can't see. I bet I do. Maybe. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Uh, well, it looks pretty close, doesn't it? Sure. We'll go with that. And I suppose you could use three different colors if you wanted. But I don't. Want All right. I'm going to leave this in here. And this one looks like it had been trying to be open before, so I'm going to... Okay, here we go. And I will stick that through to hold this closed. Okay, and then I'll fold those brad pieces down. And I tore it. Well, you know what? That's okay, too. I can glue it together on the card. So you've got this little knot piece, but because that was really thin and I tore it, that's all right. I can glue it together and it won't show. All right, I need to make, hmm, that's really pretty. Maybe I'll use a bit of that too. I need to make a piece to tuck in here. And do I want this color? Actually, I've got some of that green that's really pretty. But you know what? I don't want it. I don't want it to compete. That's a big thing for me. I really don't want it to compete with the, the, the paper and the flowers because they're so pretty. And this is embossed. You know, I bet. I bet if I were to look, there are some absolutely lovely tags in this kit. You know what? There's all kinds of lovely pieces. I just haven't dug through them all yet. I am going to use that for sure. See all kinds of fussy cut pieces and pretty pieces and pieces that I made. Look, we were going to do this one. Uh, let's see what I've got here. Oh, that's pretty too. It's a postcard. Yes, we're going to do that. Okay. Okay, those are just bits and pieces from the kit. And this is a postcard. And I'm going to fold this postcard in half to make a journaling card. Okay, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to glue this together because I can. It's, I've got this one printed on cardstock. A lot of times I will print um, fussy cut pieces on cardstock. And I don't need this anymore. That's just a piece of uh, fun foam that I use to poke holes and things. Okay, glued that down. Now I need to trim this because I didn't match it perfectly. Trim that. Okay. And I, you can see I just kind of didn't plan this and kind of winging it. But that's not a bad thing sometimes. All right, here. I'm going to use the tiny corner on this one because postcards aren't generally rounded, but because everything else in here is rounded, I'm going to round this. Okay, and ink. Whoops, I butchered that corner, so let's try that again. I must not have put it in straight. There we go, that's better. I'll ink around the edge quickly, and this will be my little tuck to go in the pocket. And I find it easier to ink it prior to putting anything on it, which is why I'm doing this now. Now, what I could do, if I wanted to, is put a little um, 
piece of scrap paper on there, coffee dyed paper, so that, um, oh, that's pretty. It's just a little bit long though. No, you know what? It's not too long. Let's just go like this. I am going to put that on top and I want it to hang over the edge just a bit. So I am going to glue this down. And again, you can see I tore it. See, this is well, it's a, it's just a little bit longer than that tag, not, not too much at all. I'm going to glue this down pretty well. This fussy cut and wet embossed. I hope that doesn't fall because that'll be really loud and clingy. That's the lid of the lace bin that sits on my desk. All right, and that way I can hang it over the edge just a bit because I definitely want to do that. And then I made the ink go over, the glue go over, but that's okay, that's a fixable thing. All right, put that in place, and now I'm going to glue this piece down. Now this is going to be a little bulkier, but that's that's all right too. And I'm going to put that right on top. See, so you can't even see because of that lace bit. You can't even tell that I tore it. And give that time to dry. And there is my little card. And I really like these words. Oh, that's funny. The blosso, the M came down here, harvest soil seed. Let's go with seedlings. These aren't really seedlings though. All right, I think there's more words. Harmony, abundance. Oh, okay, let's go with these. And I actually like that color because the color um, coordinates with, the color coordinates with the black on the, here. All right, I'm gonna cut one out. Let's see, not compost, probably not. Foliage, abundance, let's go with abundance. There's lots of daffodils there, so let's go with abundance. And if I didn't mention it, I'm going to use this in my daffodil journal. I don't remember if I mentioned that or not on this particular video, so if I did, my apologies. Okay, I'm cutting that. Even though these are like yard stakes, I am just cutting the word off that I want. And I'll ink this a little bit so that the white edges don't show. And again, mine's grungy, so I'm going to go with grungy. Let's see, do I want it on there or do I want it on here? Hmm, that's kind of pretty too. Don't know, let's see. I could go with abundance down here that won't really show, but it doesn't really need to cover that word. Maybe, oh, I like that. Okay, and then I'll lift this up and I'll tuck that right underneath there. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll tuck it here and under here. Let's make sure that's straight and that you can read the word abundance. And I like that because it balances out the black or it carries that black through. All right, and there is my little card. And I could put a vocabulary card in there too. All right, here we go. So I've got, um, here, let's I wouldn't use this one because to cover isn't really necessarily what I need, so let's leave that there. I've got a little insert with the embossed piece. I've got the ethereal with the vellum, the printed vellum, and I could have made this into a little book if I'd wanted, and I still could. Just put some of this paper behind it, right? And in fact, I may just well do that. Let's go like this. You know what? We've got this paper left over. Why not? I'm going to sew this. And this, this is how I do this 99% of the time. I sew it and then I'll trim it and I'll put it right back on that page. Okay, where's the scissor? All right, that's just this off scrap of what the other notepad and I'm gonna make it to fit here. So, Let's see, this was a smaller round corner. So we'll round that. And I will glue this down. And I'm not even gonna measure. I'm just going to go like this, right? And cut that off. Okay, and now let's do it this way. So this is gonna go on the back, right? And I need to trim it down a little bit right here. It's just a little too wide. Because I want it a little bit smaller so it doesn't peek through. So I've got another little mini notepad with places to write. And now 
I am going to round those corners. Okay, this is, whoops, sorry about that. This is turning out to be way longer than I thought. And probably the greatest reason I don't do craft with me is very often because I squirrel all the time. Okay, trimmed, ready to go. I'm going to glue this down on the back with a little notepad. And this time I am going to glue the whole thing down. And I'm going to glue it right on the back there. Okay. I'll make sure it's right side up. Yep. And that it fits. It does. It fits. Okay. See, so some of that scrap paper I had made a little itty bitty notepad there. So maybe for some hidden, hidden journaling. You know, I've got what? Several pages, four or five. I don't remember how many I put in there. Pages. So a little notepad on the back, little decoration on the front, embossing, uh, ethereal, printed vellum. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. I mean, maybe he is, maybe he isn't, I don't know. But I can easily lift this up, nothing's tucked down. I can lift these pages up, nothing's glued down. I've got my writing spaces, I've got... You know what, let's take this out, do that. Oh, that's kind of cool, I can tuck this under to hold it in place. Oh, that is very cool, that was an added bonus. Okay, added bonus, tuck that under, tuck this under, and then put my card in here. All right. Once again, squirrel, but how fun is that? Beautiful kit. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Angela. Thank you for allowing me to join the fun. I hope you all take care. Thank you for watching. And please do check out the other channels below. There are some phenomenal creators there. And I, I know you're going to enjoy it. I know I am. I'm looking forward to building this journal with them. And you know, maybe, just maybe, well, I'll put it somewhere else in this journal because look, isn't that pretty? That little just beads on a bulb pin. And the bulb pin is the same color as these. So maybe I'll even put that on the front cover. All right. Take care all. Happy creating.